All right, now that my brother's off his cell phone, uh, we can start Plato's Dialogues. Once again, uh, today what we're going to do is, uh, I think we're going to geek out a little bit, because uh, check it out, one, two, one, two, right there. We got Tolkien's letters. Um, we love Tolkien. So uh, the other day, Alex was reading this letter, and I just loved it. We loved it, because we were geeking out, but we thought we should do maybe a little bit of a, a something, something on it. So. Yeah. Let's read that letter just to maybe, I don't know about the whole thing, but no, at least that, find that selection, that yeah. selection yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll comment. This can be a 10 minute gig. So I'm going to put the timer on, uh, once you start, okay. Um, we're going to 10 minute gig it, um, a little hot cake here. Okay. A little hot cake. Let's do it. All right. Well, so the letter was Tolkien was writing to his son, Christopher Tolkien, and he's talking about his involvement, Christopher's involvement in the war in, and, uh, as a pilot. And so he says the following, Tolkien says, I wonder how you are getting on with your flying since you first went solo. The last news we had of this. I especially noted your observations on the skimming Martins. That touches the heart of things, doesn't it? There is the tragedy and despair of all machinery laid bare. Unlike art, which is content to create a new secondary world in the mind, it attempts to actualize desire and so to create power in this world. And this cannot really be done without any, with any real satisfaction. Labor-saving machinery only creates endless and worse labor. And in addition to this fundamental disability of a creature is added the fall, which makes our devices not only fail of their desire, but, in, but turn to new and horrible evil. So we come inevitably from Daedalus and Icarus to the giant bomber. It is not an advance in wisdom. This terrible truth, glimpsed long ago by Sam Butler, sticks out so plainly and so horrifyingly exhibited in our own time, with its even worse menace for the future, that it seems almost a worldwide mental disease, that only a tiny minority perceive it. Even if people have ever heard the legends, which are getting rarer, they have no inkling of their portent. How could a maker of motorbikes name his product Ixion Cycles? Ixion, who was bound forever in hell on a perpetually revolving wheel. Well, I've got over 2,000 words onto this little flimsy air letter, and I will forgive the Mordor gadgets some of their sins if they will bring it quickly to you. I love it. Fascinating. Fascinating. Lots to talk about. Um, you tell me you, give me, you give me your hot cake. Okay. My hot cake is, first of all, he contrasted art um, and machines. Mm-hmm. Um, what I had not recognized is uh, art, he said, creates secondary worlds, mm-hmm. whereas machines attempt to actualize desire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to me, first of all, that contrast was the most important contrast there. And then he talked about what the machines do and kind of unpacked how they actualize desire and why that might not be good. In fact, it's not an advance in wisdom, he says. So, and then he called them Mordor gadgets, which I think yeah. that's that's what we need to talk about, yeah. Mordor I, gadgets. I got a so, hot cake on the distinction between desire okay. and... Okay. Um, and the art. Mm-hmm. So art, he says, actualizes a second secondary world in the mind. Mm-hmm. So think of when you have a poem like mm-hmm. Gerard Manley Hopkins, mm-hmm. The Kingfishers, mm-hmm. and there it is, his art has produced this, and now you're reflecting on this, this is intrinsically valuable. The intrinsically mm-hmm. valuable act itself is a leisurely act in the classical sense of a mm-hmm. leisurely act. It's valuable mm-hmm. for itself, mm-hmm. not for its end result or usefulness or what it produces. 